Hi, welcome. I'm Deb Bailey. I'm one of the coordinators in the Microworld Investigate Lab at the Museum of Natural Sciences in Raleigh. And we are a hands-on science lab, so here we're going to do a segment on science at home. And we're doing a chemistry topic today, pH. We've all heard the term pH, acids, bases, but we're going to actually get into what does all of that mean? I mean, we, we know that if you have some lemon juice, that tends to be tart or vinegar, and those are acids. And quite often, things like a soap solution or ammonia, those are not acids, they're bases. So we're going to get into what is actually getting measured, and we're also going to do some measuring of solutions here right in your own kitchen. And we're going to make something that we can use to measure those pHs. Normally in my lab we use a pH meter or some litmus paper, but we have something right here in the kitchen that we can use to help us measure pH. And that is a head of cabbage, red cabbage to be specific, because it has a red dye in it, a pigment that's naturally occurring. And that pigment, when we extract it from this red cabbage, can measure pH. So I'm going to show you how to get started. We're going to get right to work and we will be able to measure all kinds of things in the kitchen once we have our indicator solution. And by the way, an indicator solution is something that when you mix the indicator with a, another th item from your kitchen, such as a soap solution or vinegar, it is going to do a color change. And that color change will tell you the pH. So let's get to work. So the first thing we need is some boiling water. And you can either do this as I've got here on the stovetop, or you can use your microwave and get your water to boiling there. Either way, please remember, always use your hand mitts. Okay, now the next thing you want to do once you have your boiling water is you've got to measure out about two cups worth, give or take a little, it doesn't have to be exact. And you're going to get your red cabbage, you're going to peel off pieces from the red cabbage and tear it into little pieces. About one inch square is fine, but you want to get about a cup full to a cup and a half of torn up pieces from your red cabbage and just rip it up, place it in the bowl. Because now what you're going to do is just take all of these and you're going to dump them in the water and you're going to let it just sit there for about 15 to 30 minutes. The longer the better because what that does is it allows all of that material that's the color base that's actually in the red cabbage is a pigment that is occurring naturally. And that red pigment will in the hot water come out and get all into the water and leave the cabbage leaves and you will then have nice indicator solution ready to test. So we're going to let this sit for 15 to 30 minutes. We'll come right back, and then we'll start talking about getting down to business with testing. OK, so we have our pH indicator here. It's been sitting for the last half hour. As you can see, it's a nice dark purple solution. Before we can go ahead and do anything, we need to just get all of these old leaves out of here. So I'm going to get a slotted spoon and a cereal bowl. And I'm just going to scoop out all these leaves. As you can see, they are still a little pink purple, but they've lost a lot of their color. And that's because that indicator chemical is now in the water. So I'm just going to get the last of our leaves out. Good. All set. So we'll get this out of the way because we don't need those anymore. Now. We talked about we're going to start testing. What does that exactly mean? What, what are we doing with this? So what I have here is I have a, a chart. And if you download the PDF that comes along with this video, there will be instructions for this activity. And it's going to have a slightly different color chart on it. But it's essentially going to represent the same thing. And what you would do when you're testing is you're going to take a little bit of your indicator solution. You're going to mix it with uh, an equal amount of something to test, like baking soda or vinegar. You're going to mix those together, and there will be a color change. Or the color will remain the same. 
but depending on the color change, if the color remains the same and it's just the same color as our pH indicator, we know that it hasn't changed. But if it's gone up to pink, then it's gone into the acid range. If it's gone down towards the dark blues to the aquas to the greens, then we know that we're talking about something like a base, like a soap solution. So we're going to go ahead and start that now. And I have here to do the testing. The best thing is something that has a white background. So I've got a white dish here. And you can use a small plastic cup. I happen to just have a bunch of these little plastic cups from so, uh, cough syrups and Robitussin. So I'm going to use those against the white background. And then to test, I have some materials here on a dish. And I'm going to just move things so you can see them well. And I've got here some baking soda and water. I've got some vinegar. And I've also got some dish soap. And I've got some measuring spoons. Not because I have to be that precise, but mostly it's because it's just easy to work with a teaspoon measuring spoon here. So what I'm going to do is first take a teaspoon of my indicator solution and put that in each cup because I have three cups for three tests. So I'm going to do that. Okay. And I'm going to get a paper towel that I always keep handy, clean off this teaspoon. And before I go any further, there's one last little thing I want to mention. For those of you who are really serious scientist types out there, you might consider keeping a logbook. For example, you can get just a plain composition notebook. And the composition notebook you can take like I did with this one. And I made a series of columns. And so I have a column for the date and the items I'm going to test. I have a column for what the color change is that I might notice and the pH that I'm going to interpret from that. And then the last column will be my conclusion. Is it an acid? Is it a base? Is it neutral? So, so we're going to go ahead and start here now. And I'm going to take my teaspoon. And I think what we'll do is we'll start with the vinegar. So I'm going to take a teaspoon of the vinegar. And I'm going to drop it into the first cup. And as you can see, there is an immediate color change to a bright pink. So just take a closer look at that. You can see there is no question that that has changed. So if I take my chart, and I, as you can see on the chart, the pink colors are down here in the acid range. And below the colors are the corresponding numbers for the pH. And by the way, there's a mystery about those numbers. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But the interesting quirk that we'll explain in a little bit is this particular item here, vinegar, is down in the acid range. And it's a very strong acid. It's reading about pH 3. If something is a very strong acid, why does it have such a low number? You would think if something has a lot of acid, the pH number would be very high. For example, at this end of the scale where everything is basic and there's no acid, you have a very high pH number. It just seems to be backwards. So hold on to that thought because we're going to come back to that. Now let me go ahead and test my next specimen. And that's going to be the baking soda. So as you can see, the vinegar and the baking soda, they look the same if you just look at them. They're clear. But when you go ahead and you measure a teaspoon of baking soda and drop it into the indicator, there is, again, a definite color change here. It is certainly not the same color as the pH indicator. And it is very different from our acid vinegar. And so it's much more like an aqua color here. So Again, I'm going to mix. I'm going to measure that against my chart. And certainly, we are down into the base range. We are not in the acid range at all. And we're around a pH of 11. So the last thing I want to do is take some soap. And again, I'm going to just make sure my spoon is clean. And I'm going to get a teaspoon of dish soap. Now, here's an interesting thing. And I purposely chose this, because sometimes this doesn't work the way you want it to. This dish soap happens to be very dark blue. So the question is, will that interfere with our test? So let's find out. So I'm going to drop the soap 
into my indicator and set that over there. And as you can see, it's, it's not the same color blue here, but the question in my mind is, did this turn blue simply because the soap color is overwhelming this? Or did this remain blue because it truly is a base? So my recommendation when you finish watching this video and you become your own scientist in your kitchen, try to get solutions that are clearer because that will give you a much better indication of a color change and a much more accurate reading for your pH. So I'm going to move these aside now and just to finish up, as I mentioned before, I'm kind of a science geek, so I made a notation in my manual here about the vinegar, the color change was pink, the pH is 3, and therefore it's an acid. I made a notation about my baking soda, that the color change was blue, it's got a pH of 11, and it's a base. I can't make a conclusion about my soap because I can't tell if that was truly a color change in the pH or just the color of the soap solution. So what I would do there is probably mark that I'm going to repeat my experiment with some colorless soap from the house. So we are going to clean up our mess here and in just a moment we're going to come back and talk about a cup full of beads. So stay tuned. Now it's time for those mystery questions to be answered. You're staring at a cup that has a number one on it and a bunch of beads. Let me explain, first of all, what is pH actually measuring? pH is actually measuring the amount of hydrogen ions that are in any particular solution. So in the case of pH 1, which is very strongly acid, you've got a lot of hydrogen ions. The cup is overflowing. If you go to pH 5, for example, you can see that you've still got a fair bit of hydrogen ions, but not as much as pH 1. And on our pH scale, pH 5 is, is less acidic. If you move down the scale to 7, you can see that we've kind of got almost an even amount of hydrogen ions. Uh, and in water, hydrogen and OH ions are even, so that's why you have kind of a neutral pH. If you move along to 9, we are getting very far away from acid, and as you can see, there are hardly any hydrogen ions compared to what we saw in pH 1 or 5. If you move all the way down the other end of the scale to pH 14, there are almost no hydrogen ions. So as you can see, the more hydrogen ions you have in a substance, the more acidic, but as I said earlier, the lower the pH number, and what is that all about? That seems backwards. You'd think you'd have a high number to go with a high number of hydrogen ions. Well, allow me a moment of math. In the case of the pH ions, say that we have 0.1 hydrogen ions in that cup. We could also write it as 0, excuse me, 1 times 10 to the minus 1. The exponent on that is minus 1, as you can see. And if the scientists figured out that if they went ahead and said, let's take minus the 1, and that 1 exponent is also called the log. So if you take minus the log, you get a positive 1, and that's where they came up with this chart. So what you essentially end up with for each and every one of these, because no scientist, say you're at pH 9, no scientist wants to go 0, 0.000000 and so many zeros on. They're going to say 1 times 10 to the minus 9th. You have an exponent or a log of minus 9. If you take the negative exponent or the negative log, you have a pH of 9. And the same is true if you've got down here to pH 14 where there's 13 zeros and a 1. Well, if you take that minus 14 exponent, you take the negative log or the negative exponent, you end up with 14 and that is your pH. So basically those numbers represent how many hydrogen ions are present in a solution. The fewer the hydrogen ions, as down here in the basic end, the less hydrogen ions you have, 
but the higher the pH number. Down here, the more hydrogen ions you have. And as you can see, the exponent is smaller. And you take the negative log, and you have a small number that represents an acidic pH with lots of hydrogen ions. So that is our experiment for today. You learned all about pH. You learned about hydrogen ions and why that weird scale doesn't seem to be matching how many hydrogen ions you have with such a little number. Please come and visit us again. We'll have more of these activities up. And I hope to see you soon. You all have a good day. Take care now. Bye-bye.